Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. If you want to experience God's blessings in your life, be prepared. He will first give you tests to strengthen your faith. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James 1, 2, 3. In this video, I'll be sharing with you 10 common tests that God gives believers to prepare them for blessing. These tests aren't meant to punish you, but rather to help you grow closer to God and prove your trust in Him. I pray this video blesses and encourages you in your walk with the Lord. Please support this ministry by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with others who may need this message of hope. Let's continue to build each other up through fellowship and encouragement. God bless you. Number one, my dear friends, the test of faith is one of the most significant challenges that God may present to you before bestowing His blessings upon your life. This test is designed to gauge the depth and sincerity of your belief in Him and His promises, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles and trials. Throughout the Bible, we see numerous examples of individuals whose faith was put to the test. One of the most well-known stories is that of Abraham, the father of many nations. In Genesis 22, God commanded Abraham to take his beloved son Isaac to the land of Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice. This request must have been incredibly difficult for Abraham to comprehend, as Isaac was the son he had longed for and the fulfillment of God's promise to him. However, Abraham's faith in God was unwavering, and he obeyed without question, trusting that God had a plan and would provide a way out. In our own lives, we may face similar tests of faith, although they may manifest in different forms. Financial hardships, for example, can be a significant test of faith. When faced with mounting bills, unexpected expenses, or job loss, it can be easy to lose sight of God's promises and provision. However, it is in these moments that we must cling to our faith and trust that God will meet our needs according to His riches and glory. Health issues can also be a test of faith. When we or a loved one receive a devastating diagnosis or experience chronic pain, it can be challenging to maintain our belief in God's goodness and healing power. Yet, it is essential to remember that God is the great physician, and He has the power to heal and restore, whether in this life or the next. Relationship struggles such as marital discord, wayward children, or the loss of a loved one can also test our faith. In these moments, we may question God's love and wonder why He would allow such pain in our lives. However, we must remember that God's ways are higher than our ways, and He can use even the most difficult circumstances to bring about growth, redemption, and restoration. The key to passing the test of faith is to hold fast to the promises of God, even when our circumstances seem to contradict them. As Hebrews 11, one reminds us, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is not based on what we can see or understand, but on the character and faithfulness of God. When we face tests of faith, we must remember that God is not trying to harm us or punish us. Instead, He is refining us, strengthening our faith, and preparing us for the blessings and purposes He has in store. Like a master craftsman, God uses the fires of adversity to mold us into the image of His Son and to equip us for the work He has called us to do. In conclusion, the test of faith is a critical step on the path to receiving God's blessings. It is through these trials that our faith is refined, our character is strengthened, and our relationship with God is deepened. As we navigate these challenges, let us hold fast to the promises of God, trusting in His goodness, faithfulness, and love. For blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Number two, my brothers and sisters, before you can experience the fullness of God's blessings in your life, he will often put you through a series of tests to refine your character and strengthen your faith. One of the most crucial tests is the test of obedience. God desires your obedience above all else, as it demonstrates your love, trust, and submission to His will. 
Throughout the Bible, we see numerous examples of God testing the obedience of His people. One such example is the story of Jonah. God called Jonah to go and preach to the people of Nineveh, a city known for its wickedness. However, Jonah initially disobeyed God's command and attempted to flee from his presence by boarding a ship headed in the opposite direction. This act of disobedience led to a series of consequences, including a violent storm and Jonah being swallowed by a great fish. Like Jonah, we may sometimes find ourselves in situations where God's commands don't align with our own desires or understanding. It can be tempting to follow our own path instead of submitting to God's will. However, true obedience means trusting in God's wisdom and goodness, even when we don't fully comprehend His plans. In our daily lives, the test of obedience can manifest in various ways. It may involve resisting temptation when faced with opportunities to sin, such as lying, cheating, or engaging in immoral behavior. It could mean choosing to forgive someone who has wronged us, even when our natural inclination is to hold a grudge or seek revenge. Obedience may also require us to step out of our comfort zone to serve God and others. Whether it's sharing our faith with a stranger, volunteering at a local ministry, or giving generously to those in need. Passing the test of obedience is not always easy, but it is essential for spiritual growth and maturity. As we learn to submit our will to God's, we develop a deeper relationship with Him and become more Christ-like in our character. Obedience also positions us to receive God's blessings and experience His favor in our lives. It's important to remember that obedience is not about earning God's love or salvation, which are freely given through faith in Jesus Christ. Rather, obedience is a response to God's love and a reflection of our gratitude for what He has done for us. As we obey God's commands, we demonstrate our love for Him and our desire to honor Him with our lives. In conclusion, the test of obedience is a crucial aspect of our spiritual journey. God desires our obedience above all else, as it reflects our trust and submission to His will. Like Jonah, we may face situations where obedience is difficult, but by relying on God's strength and wisdom, we can overcome temptation and follow His path. As we pass the test of obedience, we grow closer to God, experience His blessings, and become a light to the world around us. Number three, my friends, before you can receive the blessings God has in store for you, He may put you through a series of tests to strengthen your faith, character, and trust in Him. One of these crucial tests is the test of patience. God's timing is always perfect, but it often differs from our own desires and expectations. We may pray for something and expect an immediate answer or resolution, but God sees the bigger picture and knows the ideal time to grant our requests. In this test, God will challenge your ability to wait patiently for His blessings and answers to your prayers. It's essential to remember that His delays are not denials. Instead, they are opportunities for growth and a chance to deepen your faith in Him. Waiting can be difficult, especially when you're going through hardships or when your dreams seem far out of reach. However, it's during these times that God is shaping you and preparing you for the blessings to come. The story of Joseph in the Old Testament is a perfect example of the test of patience. Joseph was a man who faced numerous trials and setbacks before God elevated him to a position of authority. As a young man, Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, who were jealous of his dreams and their father's favoritism towards him. Despite this betrayal, Joseph remained faithful to God and worked diligently in Potiphar's house, where he was a slave. However, Joseph's troubles were far from over. He was falsely accused of attempted rape by Potiphar's wife and thrown into prison. In the darkness of the dungeon, Joseph could have given up on his dreams and lost faith in God. Instead, he chose to trust in God's plan and continued to use his gifts to help others, even while imprisoned. He interpreted dreams for his fellow prisoners and gained a reputation for wisdom and insight. Years passed, and Joseph remained in prison. It would have been easy for him to grow bitter and resentful, but he maintained his integrity and faith in God. In due time, God's plan for Joseph's life began to unfold. Pharaoh, the ruler of Egypt, had a series of disturbing dreams that no one could interpret. Pharaoh's cupbearer, who had been in prison with Joseph, 
remembered his ability to interpret dreams and recommended him to Pharaoh. Joseph was brought before Pharaoh and, with God's help, interpreted his dreams, predicting seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Impressed by Joseph's wisdom, Pharaoh appointed him as second in command over all of Egypt. Joseph's patience and faith had been rewarded, and he was now in a position to save countless lives during the famine, including those of his own family. In your daily life, the test of patience may manifest in various ways. You may be waiting for a job opportunity, a healing, or a breakthrough in a difficult situation. It's during these times that you must cling to God's promises and trust in His timing. Remember that He is working behind the scenes, even when you can't see it. He is orchestrating events and circumstances to align with His perfect plan for your life. As you wait patiently for God's blessings, use this time to grow in your faith and relationship with Him. Pray, study His Word, and seek His guidance. Surround yourself with supportive, faith-filled people who will encourage you and remind you of God's faithfulness. When doubts and frustrations arise, bring them to God in prayer and ask for His peace and strength to sustain you. Remember, the test of patience is not meant to discourage you, but to develop your character and prepare you for the blessings to come. As James 1, 2, 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Trust in God's perfect timing and know that He has a plan for your life that is greater than anything you can imagine. Hold on to hope, even in the darkest of times, and believe that God is working all things together for your good. As you pass the test of patience, you will emerge stronger, wiser, and more prepared to receive the abundant blessings God has in store for you. Number 4. My dear friends, before you can receive the abundant blessings God has in store for you, He will often lead you through a journey of tests and trials designed to shape your character and deepen your faith. One of the most crucial tests you may face is the test of humility. As the Bible states in James 4, 6, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. This means that God actively resists those who are arrogant and self-reliant, but He generously pours out His favor and blessing on those who humble themselves before Him. Humility is a fundamental attribute of a godly character. It involves recognizing your own limitations, acknowledging your dependence on God, and submitting to His authority in every area of your life. When you are humble, you are willing to put aside your own desires and agendas in order to follow God's will and plan for your life. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of individuals who underwent the test of humility before God could use them mightily. One such person was Moses. Born a Hebrew slave in Egypt, Moses was adopted into Pharaoh's household and grew up as a proud prince with all the privileges and power that came with his position. However, God had a different plan for Moses' life. After Moses killed an Egyptian in a misguided attempt to defend his fellow Hebrews, he was forced to flee into the wilderness. For the next 40 years, Moses lived as a humble shepherd in the land of Midian. During this time, God was teaching Moses the importance of humility and dependence on him. Moses learned to lay aside his own strength and rely on God's power and provision. When God finally called Moses to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, Moses initially resisted, feeling inadequate for the task. But through the test of humility, Moses had learned to trust in God's sufficiency rather than his own abilities. As a result, God was able to use Moses in powerful ways to deliver his people and demonstrate his glory. In your own life, the test of humility may manifest in various ways. It may involve admitting when you are wrong and seeking forgiveness from others. It may mean putting aside your own desires in order to serve and meet the needs of those around you. It may require surrendering your plans and dreams to God, trusting that His ways are higher than your ways. Humility is not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of strength and maturity in Christ. When you humble yourself before God, you open the door for Him to work powerfully in and through you. As Proverbs 22, 4 says, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. 
So if you find yourself facing the test of humility, do not despise or resist it. Instead, embrace it as an opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and become more like Christ. As you surrender your pride and self-sufficiency, you will discover the joy and freedom that comes from living in complete dependence on your Heavenly Father. Remember, God's ultimate goal is not to break you, but to bless you. The tests and trials He allows in your life are designed to refine your character, strengthen your faith, and prepare you for the incredible plans He has in store. As you pass the test of humility, you will experience a deeper level of intimacy with God and a greater measure of His grace and favor in your life. Number 5. Before you can experience the fullness of God's blessings in your life, He will often take you through a series of tests to refine your character and strengthen your faith. One of the most significant tests you may face is the test of love. The Bible tells us that God Himself is love. As His children, we are called to emulate His loving nature in our interactions with others. In fact, Jesus declared that the second greatest commandment after loving God is to love your neighbor as yourself. This means that God expects us to extend unconditional love to those around us, even when it's challenging or inconvenient. Throughout Scripture, we find examples of individuals who demonstrated extraordinary love in difficult circumstances. One such person was Ruth, a young Moabite woman who married into an Israelite family. When her husband died, Ruth found herself in a foreign land, widowed and without support. Her mother-in-law, Naomi, decided to return to her homeland of Bethlehem. Although Naomi urged Ruth to stay in Moab and remarry, Ruth refused to abandon her. She famously declared, Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Ruth's decision to leave her own country and people to care for Naomi was a remarkable act of selfless love. She sacrificed her own comfort, security, and future prospects to ensure that Naomi would not be alone in her old age. Ruth's love was not based on what she could gain from the relationship, but on her deep commitment to Naomi's well-being. In our own lives, the test of love may manifest in various ways. It could mean giving up our free time to help a friend in need, even when we're exhausted from a long day at work. It might involve using our financial resources to support a struggling family member, even if it means cutting back on our own expenses. Or it could require showing kindness and forgiveness to someone who has hurt us deeply, even when every fiber of our being wants to hold on to bitterness and resentment. Loving others unconditionally is rarely easy. It demands that we put the needs and feelings of others ahead of our own. It requires patience, empathy, and a willingness to overlook faults and failings. Yet this is precisely the kind of love that God calls us to extend to our neighbors, our enemies, and everyone in between. When we face the test of love, we have an opportunity to grow in Christlikeness and reflect God's heart to the world around us. By choosing to love sacrificially, we demonstrate the transformative power of the gospel and point others to the ultimate source of love, Jesus himself. As you navigate the challenges and relationships in your own life, Remember that God is using every circumstance to refine your character and make you more like Him. When loving others feels impossible, lean into God's strength and ask Him to fill you with His supernatural love. As you faithfully obey His command to love, you will experience the joy and blessing that comes from aligning your heart with His. Number 6. My dear friends, before you can receive the blessings God has in store for you, he will often put you through various tests to strengthen your faith, refine your character, and prepare you for the greater responsibilities that come with those blessings. One of the most crucial tests you may face is the test of integrity. Integrity is the quality of being honest, having strong moral principles, and consistently adhering to them, even in the face of adversity or temptation. God seeks those who worship Him in spirit and in truth and he will test your commitment to honesty and righteousness, even when no one is watching. The story of Daniel in the Old Testament provides a powerful example of integrity. Daniel was a man of unwavering faith and commitment to God, even in a foreign land where he faced pressure to conform to the pagan practices of the Babylonian Empire. 
when King Darius issued a decree forbidding anyone from praying to any god or man other than himself for 30 days. Daniel remained faithful to God and continued to pray openly, despite the threat of being thrown into a den of lions. Daniel's integrity and trust in God were rewarded when God protected him from the lions, and King Darius recognized the power of Daniel's God. In our daily lives, the test of integrity may manifest in various situations. It may mean keeping your word, even when it's inconvenient or costly to do so. It may involve refusing to compromise your values or beliefs, even when faced with peer pressure or the prospect of personal gain. Integrity may also require standing up for what is right, even when it means going against the crowd or risking ridicule or rejection. For example, imagine you are at work and witness a colleague engaging in unethical behavior, such as falsifying reports or stealing from the company. The test of integrity would be to report the misconduct to the appropriate authorities, even if it means risking your own reputation or relationships with coworkers. Similarly, if you are in a situation where you could easily cheat or cut corners without anyone knowing, the test of integrity is to choose the honest path, even if it requires more effort or sacrifices short-term benefits. Ultimately, the test of integrity is about consistently aligning your actions with your values and beliefs, regardless of the circumstances or consequences. It is about being true to yourself and to God, even when it's difficult or unpopular. As you face various tests of integrity in your life, remember that God is using these challenges to shape your character, strengthen your faith, and prepare you for the blessings He has in store for you. By remaining faithful and committed to honesty and righteousness, you will not only pass the test of integrity, but also become a powerful witness for Christ and a vessel for His blessings in your life and the lives of others around you. Number 7. My friends, before you can experience the fullness of God's blessings in your life, He will often take you through a series of tests to refine your character, strengthen your faith, and prepare you for the greater responsibilities and rewards that lie ahead. One of these crucial tests is the test of stewardship. In the Bible, stewardship is a recurring theme that highlights the importance of managing the resources, talents, and opportunities that God has entrusted to us. The parable of the talents, found in Matthew 25, 14, 30, perfectly illustrates this concept. In the story, a master gives his servants different amounts of money, talents, before going on a journey. Upon his return, he holds them accountable for how they use the resources he had given them. The servants who invested wisely and multiplied their talents were praised and rewarded, while the one who buried his talent out of fear was rebuked and punished. This parable teaches us that God expects us to be faithful stewards of all that He has placed in our hands. He wants us to use our resources, skills, and opportunities to glorify Him, advance His kingdom, and bless others. This means that in our daily lives, we must be intentional about how we manage the various aspects of our existence. One key area of stewardship is our finances. God calls us to be wise and responsible with the money He has given us. This involves creating a budget, avoiding unnecessary debt, saving for the future, and giving generously to support God's work and help those in need. When we demonstrate trustworthiness in our financial stewardship, God is more likely to bless us with greater resources and opportunities. Another crucial aspect of stewardship is the use of our talents and skills. Each of us has been uniquely gifted by God with abilities that can be used to serve others and make a positive impact on the world. Whether you have a talent for teaching, art, music, or business, God wants you to develop and deploy your skills for His glory. By using your talents to help others and contribute to your community, you are being a faithful steward of the gifts God has given you. Furthermore, stewardship extends to the way we treat the environment and the resources of the earth. As Christians, we believe that God created the world and entrusted it to our care. This means that we have a responsibility to be good stewards of the planet, protecting its natural beauty, conserving its resources, and working to ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Ultimately, the test of stewardship 
is about recognizing that everything we have belongs to God and that we are merely managers of His resources. When we embrace this mindset and live it out in our daily lives, we position ourselves to receive God's abundant blessings. As Jesus said in Luke 16, 10, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. By proving ourselves faithful in the small things, we demonstrate our readiness for the greater responsibilities and rewards that God has in store for us. So, if you find yourself facing the test of stewardship, remember that it is an opportunity to grow in your faith, develop your character, and align your life with God's purposes. Embrace the challenge, seek God's wisdom, and commit to being a wise and faithful steward of all that He has given you. As you do, you will experience the joy and fulfillment that comes from living a life that honors God and blesses others. Number eight, my brothers and sisters, the test of forgiveness is one of the most challenging and transformative tests that God gives us on our spiritual journey. It is a test that requires us to extend the same limitless forgiveness that we receive from God to others in our lives. The Bible teaches us that God's forgiveness knows no bounds and he calls us to mirror that forgiveness in our relationships with others. In his letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul writes, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This verse reminds us that we have been forgiven an immeasurable debt by God through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. In light of this incredible gift, we are called to extend forgiveness to those who have wronged us, no matter how deep the hurt or how undeserving they may seem. Jesus himself emphasized the importance of forgiveness through the powerful parable of the unmerciful servant found in Matthew 18:21, 35. In this story, a servant is forgiven an enormous debt by his master, yet he refuses to forgive a much smaller debt owed to him by a fellow servant. The master, upon learning of this, is furious and reinstates the original debt throwing the unmerciful servant into prison. Through this parable, Jesus teaches us that when we fail to forgive others, we are essentially denying the forgiveness that God has so generously extended to us. In our daily lives, the test of forgiveness manifests itself in various ways. It may involve letting go of grudges that we have held onto for years, choosing to forgive someone who has deeply hurt us, or seeking reconciliation in broken relationships. Forgiveness is not always easy, and it does not mean that we condone the hurtful actions of others or forget the pain they have caused. Instead, it is a decision to release the burden of bitterness and resentment, trusting that God will bring healing and justice in His perfect timing. Forgiveness is also a process that often requires time, prayer, and the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. It is not a one-time event, but a daily choice to extend grace and mercy to those around us. As we navigate the challenges of forgiveness, we can find strength and guidance in the example of Jesus, who even in his darkest hour on the cross prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Ultimately, the test of forgiveness is an opportunity for us to grow in our faith and to reflect the character of Christ to the world around us. As we choose to forgive, we experience the freedom and peace that comes from releasing bitterness and embracing grace. We also become a powerful testament to the transformative love of God, showing others the way to reconciliation and healing. In a world that often celebrates revenge and holds on to grudges, the test of forgiveness calls us to a higher standard, one that is rooted in the limitless love and compassion of our Heavenly Father. As we navigate this test, may we find the strength to extend forgiveness to others, just as we have been forgiven and may our lives be a living example of the power of God's grace to transform even the most broken of relationships. Number nine, my brothers and sisters, before you can experience the fullness of God's blessings in your life, he will often take you through a series of tests designed to strengthen your faith, refine your character, and prepare you for the greater things he has in store. One of these crucial tests is the test of perseverance. The test of perseverance is a challenging yet transformative process in which God allows various trials and hardships to enter your life. These difficulties come not to break you, but to mold you into the person God destined you to be. 
James 1, 2. 4 tells us to count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God understands that perseverance through adversity develops spiritual maturity and endurance. In your daily life, the test of perseverance may manifest in numerous ways. It could involve pushing through seasons of discouragement when your dreams seem far off or your prayers appear to go unanswered. It may require maintaining hope and faith during prolonged periods of financial strain, health issues, or relational conflicts. Perseverance necessitates trusting in God's plan, even when you cannot see the outcome or understand the purpose behind your struggles. The Apostle Paul is an exemplary model of perseverance in the face of trials. In 2 Corinthians 11, 23, 28, he recounts the many hardships he encountered in his mission to spread the gospel, including imprisonments, beatings, shipwrecks, dangers from various sources, sleepless nights, hunger, thirst, and the daily pressure of his concern for the churches. Despite these overwhelming challenges, Paul persevered, knowing that God's grace was sufficient for him and that these trials were ultimately strengthening his faith and character. As you face your own tests of perseverance, remember that God is with you every step of the way. He will never give you more than you can handle, and He will always provide a way out. When you feel like giving up, cling to the promises found in His Word, such as Isaiah 41, 10, which says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Moreover, perseverance in the face of trials demonstrates your genuine faith and love for God. It proves that your commitment to Him is not based on favorable circumstances, but on a deep, abiding trust in His goodness and sovereignty. As you persevere, you will grow in your ability to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and continue steadfastly in prayer. Remember that the testing of perseverance is ultimately for your good and God's glory. As James 1.12 promises, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Trust that God is using these trials to refine you, strengthen your faith, and prepare you for the abundant blessings and greater purposes he has in store for your life. Keep pressing forward, knowing that His grace is sufficient and His rewards are eternal. Number 10. My dear friends, one of the most crucial tests you will face is the test of surrender. Surrender is the act of yielding control, letting go of your own desires, and submitting yourself completely to God's will. It is a profound acknowledgement that His ways are higher than your ways and that His plans are ultimately for your good even when they differ from your own expectations. Throughout the Bible, we see examples of individuals who faced the test of surrender. Perhaps the most poignant is Jesus himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus wrestled with the weight of what lay ahead. He prayed fervently, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. In this moment of anguish, Jesus demonstrated the essence of surrender, a willingness to lay down his own desires in favor of God's perfect plan. In your own life, the test of surrender may manifest in various ways. It could mean trusting God's direction when it differs from your own plans or expectations. Perhaps you have a clear vision for your future, but God is leading you down a different path. Surrendering to him means letting go of your own blueprint and embracing his, even when it feels uncomfortable or uncertain. Surrender also involves yielding control of your life to God. It is natural to want to be in charge, to have a sense of mastery over your circumstances. However, God often calls us to relinquish that control and trust Him to guide our steps. This can be particularly challenging when faced with difficult decisions, unexpected challenges, or seasons of waiting. Yet it is in these moments that surrendering to God's sovereignty brings peace and assurance, knowing that He is working all things together for your ultimate good. Another aspect of the test of surrender is accepting God's answers to your prayers. 
even when they differ from your hopes or expectations. You may pray fervently for a specific outcome, healing from an illness, restoration of a relationship, or provision in a financial need. While God always hears and answers prayer, His responses may not align with your desires. Surrendering means trusting that His answers, whether yes, no, or wait, are rooted in His infinite wisdom and love for you. As you navigate the test of surrender, it is crucial to remember that surrender is not a sign of weakness or defeat. Rather, it is a position of strength, rooted in the assurance that God's plans are far greater than anything you could imagine. When you surrender your life to Him, you open yourself to receive the abundant blessings He has in store. Moreover, surrender is not a one-time event, but a daily choice. Each day presents new opportunities to lay down your own will and embrace God's. It is a continual process of letting go, trusting, and yielding to His guidance. As you consistently choose surrender, you will find your faith deepening, your character being refined, and your life aligning more closely with God's perfect will. In conclusion, the test of surrender is a crucial step in your journey of faith. It challenges you to lay down your own plans, yield control, and trust God's direction, even when it differs from your expectations. Like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, may you find the courage to pray, not my will, but yours be done. As you surrender your life to God, you will discover the peace, purpose, and abundant blessings that flow from a heart fully yielded to Him. Heavenly Father, I come before you humbly, knowing that the path to your blessings is not always easy. I understand that you may test me in various ways before showering me with your grace and favor. Help me to face these trials with faith, perseverance, and a heart that seeks to glorify you. When you test my patience, grant me the strength to wait upon your perfect timing. May I trust in your divine plan, even when the wait seems long and the future unclear. Teach me to find peace in the waiting, knowing that you are working all things together for my good. As you test my faith, may I cling to your promises and trust in your unfailing love. When doubts and fears assail me, remind me of your faithfulness and the countless ways you have proven yourself in my life. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight, trusting that you are always with me. When you test my obedience, give me the courage to follow your commands even when they are difficult or unpopular. May I seek to please you above all else, putting aside my own desires and agendas. Help me to obey you wholeheartedly, knowing that your ways are perfect and your plans are good. As you test my humility, keep me from pride and arrogance. Teach me to serve others with a genuine heart, putting their needs before my own. May I always remember that every good thing in my life comes from you, and that apart from you, I can do nothing. When you test my relationships, help me to love others as you have loved me. Give me the grace to forgive those who have hurt me, to seek reconciliation when possible, and to build others up with my words and actions. May my relationships be a reflection of your unconditional love. As you test my generosity, open my hands and my heart to give freely of my time, talents, and resources. Remind me that everything I have belongs to you and that I am merely a steward of your blessings. May I find joy in sharing with others and trust you to provide for my every need. When you test my integrity, give me the strength to stand firm in my convictions and to live a life of honesty and righteousness. May I be a person of my word, keeping my promises and living with authenticity. Help me to shine as a light in a dark world, pointing others to you. As you test my perseverance, help me to press on through trials and difficulties knowing that you are with me every step of the way. Give me the endurance to run the race set before me, fixing my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith. May I never give up, but trust in your sustaining grace. When you test my surrender, help me to lay down my own plans and desires, trusting in your sovereign will. May I daily take up my cross and follow you, knowing that your plans for me are far better than anything I could imagine. Help me to find joy and peace in surrendering my life to you. Finally, as you test my worship, may my life be a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to you. Help me to praise you in the good times and the bad, recognizing that you are always worthy of my adoration. 
May my worship be authentic and heartfelt, a sweet aroma rising to your throne. Thank you, Lord, for the tests that refine me and prepare me for your blessings. I trust in your goodness and your love, knowing that you are working all things together for my ultimate good and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In closing, remember that God does not give us tests to punish us, but to strengthen our faith and dependence on Him. While the challenges may seem difficult, take comfort knowing that God will never give you more than you can handle. He promises that no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. If you stay close to God through prayer and studying His Word, you will find the strength and wisdom to pass each test with flying colors. And in the end, you will emerge all the richer for having relied on His sustaining grace. Thank you for watching this video on how God uses tests to bless us. I hope it has encouraged you on your spiritual journey. To support this channel and for more Christian motivation, please like this video, subscribe and check out our other Bible-based content. May God bless you abundantly.